Well guys, it's been a while since we fed the entire reptile zoo. And I'm gonna start with my girl Ivy. And she's gonna get a giant 20 pound pig. Here you go, you want these? No! Oh my gosh, the power! I would definitely not want to get bit by that now. I mean, she went from like nothing to grabbing that. I, I mean, wish you guys could feel the power she had. And of course, she's gonna drag it right into the water. Just like always where she wants to eat. So we're gonna feed the entire reptile zoo today. Of course, my girl Ivy is always the first one that gets fed. She'll take, you know, anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes to crush this thing. But we have a lot to feed. So let's get rolling. It's been a while since Gemma ate again. She's been back on a hunger strike, but she's been acting a little bit interested. Like she looks like she might want food. So I'm just gonna try a little pig here for her. Come on, Gemma. I'd love for you to eat again. There you go. She's looking interested. I don't know if she's gonna take it or not. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on. Oh, yes! I love it! Gemma is back on food again. And again, this is a pretty small meal, but I want to give her a test meal right now. Again, because she's been off food for another four or five months, we're not gonna feed her too much right off the bat. But now that she's back on food over the next few months we can start hammering her up and stuff like that getting her nice and beefy i always love when Gemma's back on food she's definitely one of the top snakes in my collection back on food is awesome another kind of mental snake when it comes to feeding is this guy here this is el toro the bull snake he, he absolutely is not come on don't go crazy Tell you what, you just never know what's gonna happen. Today is actually going pretty darn well. It's nice because like I said, I haven't been feeding snakes nearly as much as I had been. I'm a little bit out of practice, so I still have those little heebie jeebies You know, when snake's about to strike, you're like, oh, please don't miss, don't bite me, don't bite me. So uh, it's cool that things are going well. Oh yeah, it looks like Cupcake is ready to roll. There's no doubt about that. She looks like she is fired up. Oh. And just like ivy, it must be a boa thing, right? Because anacondas are typically boa day family. It must be a boa thing where they just hit so darn hard. I guess blood pythons do that too. Yeah. You know, a lot of snakes do. So I guess I'll uh, strike that and uh, let's just move on. Okay, we've got our black-headed python snap and pop here. There's the one. And this one's coming over going, hey, I want food too. There you go, bud. Black-headed pythons are an absolute trick. Come on, bud. <laughs> oh, God. That was quick. That's the easiest snake I fed today. We've got the IMG Motley Boa here in the back. Absolutely wonderful snake. Look at how dark that is. And it's just going to get darker and darker as it gets older. And in typical boa fashion, strikes like an absolute maniac. That's interesting. Sunrise actually typically doesn't like pigs that much, but it looks like she's pretty hungry, so I just have to get the right side of the cage open. Hello, girl. What you doing? You want a pig? We're actually out of rabbits right now. We're picking up here a little bit later on. Ah, yeah, I shook it too. Everything is fired up. Yo, that's what happens this time of year, right? It's in the summertime. It's warm. It's time of year where everything wants to eat really aggressively, so it's really good. And like I said, we're going to get rabbits later on this week. So we can feed the animals that don't like pigs, in particular, Juliet and Lucy typically won't take pigs, so uh, we'll feed them later in the week. That was my fault. And now we have a little bit of a situation here. We definitely don't want Night Fury to eat the ball. There's no doubt about that. And it's uh, curling up all over the place. Okay, so let's try this again. <laughs> that was totally a rookie mistake right there. I haven't been feeding as often, so I've lost a little bit of my touch. There's no doubt about that. Mike is uh, is the expert these days, so wow, what a rookie move, but look at that. When he grabbed that, man, he just gives you an idea how much that that would hang on if that was your hand. Definitely that I do it, but what a beautiful snake. Look at how great it is, but no worse for wear. No big deal. Next up is Pinocchio. That thing is amazing. I tell you what, I love Baron's racers. Faraday's actually about ready to get a nice big enclosure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. But yeah, we're moving some things around because obviously Faraday is getting way too big and kind of outgrowing this enclosure. So we're actually gonna move a bunch of things around and get her into an enclosure that's gonna be six foot by four foot by four foot. It's gonna have a little water basin in there. It's gonna be pretty cool. We'll do that in the next few days. <laughs> Joker, wakey wake gigs and bakey. Here you go, bud. What a cool snake. I mean, I tell you what, scaleless Texas rat snakes, they're just awesome. Oh my gosh, she's already striking, Brian. So what happens, especially with the lava snakes, is that they start to smell the rodent in the air as we're feeding. So they know it's coming. She's just going crazy. Of course, this is Neo, is one of my prettiest snakes by far. I mean, just absolutely stunning and a great eating snake. Again, this is a reticulated python. Pied stay a little bit smaller. I mean, typically you don't get pieds much over 15 foot or something like that. But she does have motley and she has golden trout, which ironically enough, also stay a little bit smaller. Too. But I expect her to probably get a good 15, 16 foot. And when she's that big, oh my goodness, is she gonna be gorgeous? Next up, we got our boy Marshmallow, the ivory Burmese python. Looking it. like it wants to eat for sure. Nice little piggy for it. Come on, little buddy. Well, nope, don't get too close. 
there it goes. But you know, it's not all about feeding today. There's always work going on over at the Legacy Aquarium and they got some stuff going on over there. What do you say we go check that out and then we'll come back and feed the rest of the zoo? Just a little update over at here at the building. It's almost done as far as the front facade going on. I mean, look at how cool this is. The angles that are going on here. Interest is gonna be so impressive. And along this like flat board right here, it'll say the Legacy Aquarium and Reptarium across here. There'll be lights that light everything up. Actually here, you can see where the entire curve is going. It's got this lasso area to frame out right here. And then the curve, and then this is pretty much all windows here. The pond has cleared up. So basically what we have is we just have one filter that's going. That is the wetlands filter that is just cycling the water so obviously the water falls off or they're off and stuff like that but we have that but look at how clear the water is it's gonna be an absolutely mental entrance there's no doubt about that what's kind of cool is this whole curve that goes all along here and stuff like that it'll actually be lit up too with LED light so that we can change the color as well the actual glazing or glass is gonna be this slight bluish tint we'll be able to change the color of that not to mention there's lights in the pond that aren't on now either that they'll be shining up and they'll be glistering and glimmering on all the glass not only is all of this happening but of course we're starting the roof now too. The roofing for this is going to get roofed in and then we're actually replacing the roof up top as well too. So a lot of things going on. I mean it's not just like hey putting exhibits in right. As a matter of fact I can't wait till we get to the point where we're putting in tanks and exhibits and stuff like that. The whole phase one of the project is to build this out so that it looks really cool. But we're getting close we're probably about four weeks out from glazing or the glass and then when that goes in this place is going to look absolutely ridiculous. Then this wall comes out and we can start to see the entire thing. It's going to be crazy. And you're over from left to right, and I got everything out. So you got any questions, comments, concerns before the call? You're over right there and out. Try to get him to get that uh, sunset, you know? What? Nubbins, the Dominican red mountain boa. Go, bud. It's always just such a consistent eater. I mean, it never gives you any problems at all. What I think is one of our most underrated snakes here at the Reptarium. It doesn't come out that much because people don't ask for it that much, but it is just a really cool snake. So if you ever come to the Reptarium, definitely spend some time with Mr. Nubbins. Here we go, Tiger Lily. What a beautiful snake, huh? Brazilian rainbow boa. It doesn't get much better than a Brazilian rainbow boa, to be honest with you. Just that naturally colored, absolutely amazing animal. One day, I really hope I can get down to the rainforest and catch one of these guys in the wild because that would be an absolute pleasure. Come on, bud. There you go. Sometimes you just have to tease them just a little bit, right? You know, it's a frozen rodent, so they want a little bit of movement. And a lot of times a good trick is if you touch them in the neck, they'll kind of shoot sideways and eat. That's just kind of a trick I've used forever. Bugatti is getting big and beautiful. I tell you what, look at that snake right there. Come on, Bugatti. Up you go, up you go, up you go. Come on, what are you doing? Bugatti, what are you doing? <laughs> Finally, you silly little monkey, you. It's so exciting to see what's going on over at the Legacy Aquarium, you know. Every day is exciting, and you know, sometimes the construction part might not seem that uh, glamorous and stuff like that. Come on, Sam. Hey, there you go, buddy. There you go. What a beautiful snake. I tell it, I absolutely love it to death. But again, you know, the construction part is not always glamorous. I mean, when we get to the point where we're installing tanks and exhibits and building stuff, that's when things get really, really exciting. But the truth is, is that this is all part of it, right? You know, the roof, the front facade, the glass, all these things, you know, plumbing trenching, electrical, HVAC, which is the heating and cooling. You know, those are all things that may not seem glamorous, but it's all very imperative for those things to get done so that we have an aquarium that actually operates successfully, right? So I get excited about every step of the way. On fire, I tell you what, I remember when we got this animal and it was relatively small and I told you guys how beautiful it was gonna get when it got bigger. And it is getting big and it is getting beautiful. It's absolutely incredible. Come on, bud. Oh, there you go. A little hesitant at first, but just take a look at the color and the pattern on that animal. I mean, that is it's just breathtaking to me. I think it's one of the prettiest retics, you know, just absolutely incredible. So uh, yeah, it's only gonna get better because of the mutations that's in. As it gets bigger, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Next up is Sally, the Blue Baron's Racer. She's always a really good eater. The one snake that always is fun to feed is Lucky. I love this snake so much. I've had it since it was a little tiny baby. And again, this is what they call a tiger Amazon tree boa. I've never bred this one. I bred Amazon tree boas in the past. I've never tried to breed Lucky, which is kind of weird because he's a really good animal and genetically it's really cool too. Here he comes. Here you go. 
There you go, buddy. Beautiful snake, I tell you what. You know, get that into a nice red animal or something like that, tell you what, I definitely need to breed them. I can't tell you how much I've missed feeding these snakes. I mean, I'm having an absolute blast. There's Lemon Drop, the albino Darwin's carpet python. Come on, come on there you go. Beautiful snake, and again, I love the enclosures where they can climb, and you know, it just feels so natural. We probably get some foliage in here. You know, we have a little plant down here, but we probably need Jessica to do this enclosure just to make it pop just a little bit more, but uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful snake. Speaking about a beautiful snake, Ice Cube is ridiculous. A diamond python, of course. Very similar to Lemon Drop, of course, carpet python, but just one of those dream animals that I've always wanted my entire life, and it's just such a pleasure to actually have a pair of them now. We have one on display and one off display, and uh, probably the They'll go together on display when we get across the street because they get a much larger enclosure. It's going to be pretty cool to showcase them together. Al is always a crazy eater, so you have to be really, really careful when you're feeding this guy because you never know what he's going to do. Come on, bud. Whoa, there it is. Okay, that ended up working out pretty well. Like I said, it can go all over the place. I remember last time I fed him. He came shooting out and literally almost got my foot. Almost bit Jay's foot the other day. I mean, it's a really docile, beautiful animal, but when it comes to feeding, absolutely mental. He's gonna pee for the next 18,000 days straight. Damn. Okay. This is the fastest eating snake that we have. Of course, this is the false water cobra. And this thing will eat so fast, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, as soon as it takes it, it's just like, ruff, 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 ruff. And now uh, it's gotta get a larger enclosure too, because it's starting to get some size to it. There's no doubt about that. These guys do get big. They'll get seven, eight foot or something like that. So it's gonna need a pretty large enclosure. But uh, it's just a beautiful snake. I remember when Luna just used to eat little pinky mice. That's all she ate. And now it's getting bigger and bigger. It's absolutely cool animal. You know, it's one of those things that again, it's like, I like it that it's getting bigger, but at the same time, you know, it was cool to have this little tiny snake that kids could hold. Still small enough to certainly do it, but it can eventually get three or four foot big. And so it was not quite as cool when it comes to a little baby snake. But still great. And she's just getting prettier and prettier as she grows. I absolutely love Sanzeni. I talk about dream animals all the time. This was an animal that I always wanted to get. And oh, it came on that hide. So you know, these guys are from Western Madagascar. And again, I kind of vision this being kind of like the area that they're from. You know, it's a little bit drier in the West. But still, you're going to have trees and, you know, holes and trees where they're gonna go. And this is kind of simulating that, right? Like a hole in a tree, it's in there, it's hiding. Prey comes by, just comes out and snatches it up. I mean, just it's just cool. I love when I see this natural behavior here at the Reptarium. Cupcake just finished her first one, so we're gonna go ahead and see if she wants a second one. Want another one? <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. I tell you what, it's nice to get back to feeding snakes. Like I said, it's been a couple months just because of my condition and stuff like that. But uh, I'm gonna start feeding snakes again because this was so much fun. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember. Are there gonna have questions, comments, concerns before the call? Right there. Yeah. <laughs>